guys, it's Ro. Welcome back to my channel. Happy spring. Around this time of year, I love to make Easter or springtime treats. Growing up, Easter is a holiday that we celebrated in my family. My mom used to hide eggs everywhere. And for Easter dinner, she would always make a delicious Easter treat. So I thought, let's make a couple things today to give you some ideas for Easter or for spring, whatever you fancy. So today we're gonna be making three treats. Bunny bun cake balls, a beautiful garden cake, and some carrot cake cookies. Before we get started, if you like seeing these baking videos and these yummy recipes, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, click subscribe, it's free, and ring the bell to receive notifications every time I post a new video. The first recipe that we're gonna be making are these bunny bum cake balls. The recipe is from my latest cookbook, Baking All Year Round, and here it is right here. I love these because the cake balls are strawberry it's strawberry cake oh my gosh they taste so good and they're bite-sized there's also a ton more recipes in here recipes for all of the holidays that I celebrated growing up if you guys are interested I'll put a link down below you can go check it out and find a signed copy of my book at rosetapancino.com all right now let's make some cute little bunny bums First step to making these, we're over at the stove and we're gonna make a strawberry mixture. You'll need about 10 to 12 strawberries, it kinda depends on their size, and you wanna cut them up dice. Then you're just gonna pour it into a medium-sized saucepan on a medium heat, then add a little bit of sugar and water. Tablespoon of each. Just keep stirring until they heat up and it comes to almost a boil, it's like a simmer. You're gonna see bubbles all around the sides. This usually takes just a few minutes for it to heat up. Once it's nice and hot, I'm gonna turn the heat down to low. And over here, we're going to make a slurry. This is to help thicken up our strawberry mixture over here. And what it is, just a little bit of cornstarch and water. You're gonna add the cornstarch to the water, boop, 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 like so. Then with a small spoon, mix together. And you don't wanna add your cornstarch directly to your strawberries, because it's gonna get really clumpy. That's why you make the slurry first. Once you add the slurry to the strawberry mixture, stir constantly. Keep stirring until it thickens. This usually takes about two minutes. This is looking good. Now turn off your heat and let it completely cool for the next step. While our strawberry mixture is cooling, we're gonna make our cake batter. Starting with our dry ingredients. We're gonna whisk together flour, baking powder, and salt. Next, in a large bowl, we're gonna cream together our butter and sugar. Pour in the sugar. Ooh. Remember, you want your butter at room temperature. It should be really soft, but not melted. You don't wanna do melted butter, and you don't want cold butter right out of the refrigerator. Using an electric hand mixer, you're gonna to mix together for about three to five minutes on a higher speed. Now we're ready for the next step, which is to add our egg whites. We want to add it one at a time. There's two here, so I'm just going to pour in half, mix it up, then the other half, and mix it up again. Our mixture is nice and smooth. Now we're going to grab our strawberry mixture, which has been cooling over here, and we're going to add it to this big bowl. All of it. Yum, 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 yum. This looks like spring. It smells like spring. We're going to add a little bit of vanilla extract. Now give it a quick mix. Last step to making this cake batter is you're gonna alternate adding your dry ingredients and your milk to this main mixture, starting and ending with dry. I'm gonna do half of the dry ingredients, mix it up, all of the milk, mix it up, and second half of the dry, and then mix it up. Our batter is ready, it is smelling so good. Now this pan is already greased and lined with a piece of parchment paper at the bottom so that taking out the cake is easy as pie. Pour all the batter into your pan. Batter's in the pan, it is ready to bake, so you're gonna heat your oven to 350 degrees and bake for about 30 minutes. Once your cake has baked, give it plenty of time to cool. Then we are gonna crumble our cake in a large bowl. I'm gonna cut this into fours just to make it a little bit easier because I've got little hands. You can do all sorts of stuff to crumble a cake. You can go like this. You can just start breaking it apart. This is just messy and fun. I'm also gonna add a scoop of buttercream. Sometimes I do this, sometimes I don't. Depends on the moisture of the cake. Now on a very low speed, I'm gonna use an electric mixer to mix this all up. 
Our cake is looking good, and now we're gonna scoop it into balls. Then place them on a baking sheet lined with a piece of parchment paper so that they won't stick. Just keep doing this and fill up the rest of your tray. Once you've scooped all of your cake balls onto the baking sheet, you're gonna roll them lightly, gently with your hands. This recipe makes about 20 cake balls. Once your cake balls are all rolled, we're gonna pop these in the refrigerator for one hour to chill. Once your cake balls have chilled, it is time for my favorite part. It's time to decorate and dip. Here we go. All right, so you're just gonna take one of these cute little cake balls here and dunk it into your white melted chocolates. You can do white melted chocolate or white candy melts, whatever you have. And I'm using this little heated pot. You're gonna plop them right in here and you're gonna make sure it gets all covered. Then you're gonna pick it up with the fork. Be really careful and you're just gonna let the excess melted chocolate run off. Then you're gonna bring it over back to your baking sheet and very gently with the knife scoop it on top. Now you're gonna do this to the rest of your cake balls. We've dipped all of the cake balls and they are setting off to the side for a few minutes while we pipe some cute little bunny feet. Now the template is in the back of the book right here. These are the actual sizes. So what you can do is you can take a piece of parchment paper or trace paper and get the right size and copy it. Or I also have templates that are online that you can download. Here's what the templates look like. Just a ton of bunny feet. We're gonna need 40 because we have 20 cake balls. That's a lot. And then I'm gonna place a piece of parchment paper on top. I scooped what was left over of the melts into this little piping bag and I have a number three tip at the end for a little bit more control. And now we're just gonna pipe all of the little bunny feet. You can either do the outline and then fill it in or just fill it in as you go, however you'd like. All of our little bunny feet have set and now we're gonna pipe on some cute little details to look like the bottom paws. So we just peeled them off of the parchment paper. They come right off once they're dry. And then like this bottom row that I've piped here, this is what they're gonna look like. We want this little center pad and then some little toe pads. I melted some pink candy melts, put them in a piping bag with a number one tip at the end. That is the smallest tip and it is for the most control. Do this to the rest of your little bunny feet. Last decoration step before we add everything together is making our cute little bunny tails. I've made some over here. And all you need to do is take a mini marshmallow, you cut it in half, roll it between your fingers, and it gets really sticky. You're just gonna stick it into a bowl of white non perios little sprinkles, and you're just gonna roll it around in there. Then you just place it right here, boop. Just keep doing this to make the rest of your tails. Remember, you need 20. For the final step, it's time to assemble. This is what a finished little bunny bum cake ball is going to look like. Put these all together, and again, in a piping bag, I've got some candy melts, and I've just cut off the tip because we just need a small amount. Put two small dots, boop, at the top. Stick on your two bunny feet, and you're gonna need to hold them in place until the melted chocolate just starts to harden. You don't need to hold it on long. Look at that, already standing. One more little dollop, and place on your bunny tail. <gasps> and there you have it. Once these are all assembled, I love to plate them to look like they're digging in dirt. So I'll use crushed up Oreos to put all over the plate, or you can take shredded coconut flakes. You can color them green and put them all over the plate to look like they're diving in the grass. Get creative with it. The next recipe that we're gonna be making is this delicious spring garden cake. This recipe is super fun and delicious. It looks like a little garden with a bunch of cute little vegetables. Now the cake itself will be a chocolate cake and the recipe that we're gonna be using is from my first cookbook, the Nerdy Nummies cookbook. The recipe is the rich chocolate cake and I love it because it's a wonderful chocolate cake recipe. It's a little bit unique because there's a little bit of cinnamon in it and we use sour cream so it's got a lot of moisture. Also, this recipe is super simple. It doesn't need any fancy equipment. You don't need a stand mixer, an electric mixer. All you need is a whisk. I've got all the ingredients out in front of me. Again, I'll be posting all the ingredients and their measurements down below. So if you want to follow along at home and make this cake, you can. All right, so first we're going to start with our dry ingredients. In a large mixing bowl, we are going to add our flour, cocoa powder, cinnamon, a little bit of salt, baking powder, and baking soda. Then whisk together till well combined. You just keep mixing till it's all the same color. We're gonna add our regular white granulated sugar, 
and a little bit of brown sugar. And then we're gonna whisk together once again. Dry ingredients is all done. Now in this large mixing bowl, we're gonna mix together our wet ingredients. So we're gonna start with our two eggs. The whole egg, we're using the yolk and the white, a little bit of water and vanilla extract. Then we're gonna break up those yolks and mix together. Add a little bit of vegetable oil and sour cream. Then mix together one more time. Just keep mixing till it's nice and smooth. We've got our dry ingredients, our wet ingredients, and now we just Put them together. Pour all of your wet ingredients into your dry. Whisk together till well combined. And remember, don't over mix. As soon as all the dry ingredients are incorporated, stop. I poured all the cake batter into our baking pan. The baking pan is greased and lined with a piece of parchment paper at the bottom so the cake won't stick. Because the cake is a little bit more deep, we are going to slow bake the cake. And a slow bake means I'm gonna reduce the heat a little bit. You're gonna heat your oven to 325 and bake for about 40 minutes. Just keep your eye on it. Once your cake has baked, give it plenty of time to cool and cut in half. Now in front of me, I've got a square cake plate, a turntable, and some chocolate buttercream and some vanilla buttercream, which I've colored to be green. First step, we're gonna assemble our cake. On top of your cake plate, I'm gonna put a little dollop down so that the cake will stick. I'm gonna place it right in the center. Now we're gonna pipe a layer on top of this cake. Zigzag, fill it in, smooth out the icing. Then place your second cake layer on top. And instead of doing the top side up, you're gonna flip it upside down because it's nice and flat on the bottom. Once the cake is assembled, cover the entire thing with your buttercream icing. Once the cake is iced, use your offset spatula again to smooth it out. Now the cake is all covered in icing, and in this hand, I've got a little piping bag with some more green buttercream icing with a grass tip at the end. This is a number 233 tip. We're gonna pipe grass all along the edges on the top of the cake. You just apply some pressure and pull up. Look at that, it looks just like grass. And you're just gonna do this all the way around the cake. Now we're gonna make a cute white picket fence all the way around our garden. In front of me, I've got some white fondant rolled out and a little ruler. And we're gonna be making two parts of this fence. The first is gonna be about half an inch thick and the second a quarter inch thick. With a small sharp cutting knife, I'm gonna make that first cut and then this second cut. Let me peel these two up. So the skinny piece right here, we want to be six inches long. We're gonna put two of these smaller ones on each side of the cake, so you're gonna need eight of these total. This thicker one, we're gonna cut them to be three inches. And we're gonna need 20 of these, the three inch thicker ones. And we're gonna cut the top to have a little angle to look like the top of the fence. Once these are cut out, you're gonna set them off to the side to dry. Look how cute this fence is. It is really coming along. I have put the fence on three sides of the cake and I'm gonna show you how to do the last side that I have. I've also decorated the cake plate. I put down some brown fondant so it looked like dirt and I glued a little ribbon around the side of the cake plate. In front of me, I've got the last pieces of the fence. I'm gonna show you how I put them on the cake. The quarter inch long strips, about six inches. You'll put two of them on the side of the cake. And here I've got a little bit of the icing. We're gonna pipe a little bit on the back. It's gonna be like glue. We're gonna place these on first. Okay, we're gonna line it up on this side and that side, then gently press into the cake. Take the little fence post and you're gonna put a little icing, but not all the way up, just about to here. This one's gonna go on the corner. This looks amazing. The cute little fence is all done, and now we're gonna add our edible dirt onto the top of our garden. These are just blended cookie crumbs. I used Oreos. You scrape out the filling and you blend them up. Take a scoop, be careful, place it on top. I'm trying not to get it on the grass and just in the middle of the cake. Our garden is looking really good, but what is a garden without cute little vegetables? For the vegetable decorations, I've got it all laid out in front of me. I'm gonna be making mini cabbages, cauliflower, carrots, radishes, and even a little shovel. Now, for the cabbage, we're using three different shades of green. You're gonna need two three-leaf clover of the darker green and two of the medium green and a little ball of the lighter green. I'm gonna show you how to do this with a cool new tool that I have never used before. This is a flat 
flower forming pad. Take your cute little three leaf clover cookie cutter, cut out into that medium colored fondant, place it onto your foam pad. You're gonna use your ball tool. We're gonna be using the big ball end and we're just gonna be putting some pressure on it like this. We're just gonna press it flat and work on the individual like clover leaves. You can also push in the middle and pull out to the edge like that. Now add a little bit of water with this tiny little brush. Just put a little bit here in the center and up the side. It's gonna act as glue and you're gonna take that light colored green ball, place it in the middle. Then with this tool, because it's sticky with the water, you're gonna place your finger on top to hold it in place and then just use this tool, put it up. Give it a little pinch. Boop, like so. So you're just gonna keep making your little clovers because you're gonna need two of the lighter color and two of the darker color to make a cabbage. Now to make the mini cauliflower is basically the same step. You're gonna use the clover cookie cutter. So once you've flattened them out, stagger them like this and wrap them around this cute little ball of white fondant to look like this. And how you make the white cauliflower part is you're gonna take a little ball of white fondant, a metal decorating tip. This is a number eight and you're just gonna texture it. You're gonna poop, 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 get on the top, and that's how you make this cute little cauliflower. Now for the carrots, to make the stem of the carrots, you're gonna be rolling these teeny little green greens, and then you're gonna line about four or five of them up and roll them together so that they stick. And for these teeny little carrots, you just take a little ball of orange fondant, you roll it into a ball, and then you pinch one of the ends. Then using a small brush, put a little bit of water at the end again, and very carefully, Oh, oh, this is the tricky part. Aha, I've done it. Make little impressions into the carrot. Then to make the radishes, you'll need some red fondant, a little bit of white fondant, and green fondant. You're gonna roll two very small balls of green fondant. Then using the ball tool, you're gonna flatten them like so. And then very carefully pinch together to make two little Shrek ears and then pinch those two together. Then to make the radish itself, you're gonna roll a small ball of the red fondant, small ball of the white fondant, put them together, and when you're rolling them, you're going to pinch the end to make a little pointed end. It gives it a little marble effect, and again, using your sharp tool, you're gonna poke a hole at the top where the greens are going to go in. And lastly, just for fun, I made a little shovel. I used some gray fondant and brown fondant and a mini teardrop cookie cutter. So I cut out a little bit of the gray and then again with the ball tool, flattened it. And I've got a little log of the brown fondant as the handle. And then I wrapped it around and pinched. So these are the steps of how to make that little shovel. Our garden cake is done, our little mini vegetables are done, and now we're gonna plant our garden. Place your little mini veggies in the dirt on top of your cake. And ta-da, there you have it. Here is the spring garden cake using a delicious chocolate cake recipe. And I love that it combines one of my favorite chocolate cake recipes with a little hint of tiny baking because we've got a bunch of tiny decorations. Now the next treat that we're gonna be making are these yummy carrot cake cookies. If you love carrot cake, you will love these. And also if you love cookies, you may just love these just because. The last recipe, we went a little extra with the decorations and in this, recipe, we're just going extra with flavor and texture. To make this recipe, the first thing that you're gonna do is whisk together your dry ingredients in a medium-sized bowl. Add your flour. We've got cinnamon, nutmeg, and ginger. All right, now we're gonna add our baking soda and a little bit of salt. Whisk together until well combined. Once whisked, you're gonna set this off to the side. And again, you want your butter to be at room temperature, soft, you don't want it melted, and you don't want it cold right out of the fridge and we're using brown sugar. Mix together for a couple minutes on a medium speed to get a little fluffier. You will know you've mixed it long enough when the texture is not so sandy, but it's more creamy. Now you're gonna add your egg and vanilla extract. Add one egg, it's the yolk and the egg white, the whole egg and a little bit of vanilla extract. And then we're gonna mix it up one more time. This next step requires a really high-tech gadget, a wooden spoon. So you're gonna take all your dry ingredients and pour it into this mixture, right in the middle, mix together. The last things that we're gonna add to our delicious dough, we've got some chopped nuts here. These are chopped pecans, fresh shredded carrot, and some oats. I'm gonna start with some carrots because it's gonna add a little bit of moisture. Let's add our nuts and our oats. 
Then just keep mixing till well combined. The cookie dough is all ready. We're ready to get these on the tray and bake. I'm gonna be scooping the cookie dough onto a baking sheet lined with a piece of parchment paper so the cookies won't stick. And I'm using a big ice cream scoop. This is about three tablespoons. So if you don't have this exact scoop at home, you can just measure three tablespoons. This recipe makes eight cookies, because I scoop them as big cookies. Because these cookies are so big and dense, we're gonna help them out a little bit. You're gonna take your hand, dip it into a little bit of water. You want a damp hand, so, because it's kind of sticky, so you don't want it to stick to you. Press them down a little bit, flatten them out. It's gonna help them bake a little bit more evenly in the oven. Now our cookies are ready to bake. Heat your oven to 350 degrees, and we're gonna bake these for about 10 to 13 minutes. You'll know they're ready when the cookies get a little brown around the edges, and it might still look a little soft in the middle and that is okay you can take them out then because they will continue to bake on the baking sheet while our cookies are baking we're gonna make a cream cheese icing and drizzle it on the top that is the only decoration that we're doing and it's super easy look at this so three ingredients to make this it's very easy in a medium bowl you're gonna scoop in some cream cheese add half the powdered sugar I'm just eyeballing it that's a little messy and then we're going to mix together now add the second half of the powdered sugar mix it up up, and then we're gonna add our vanilla extract. Perfect, now I'm gonna put this in a piping bag and we'll drizzle it over our cookies. After the cookies are done baking, give them plenty of time to cool, and then we're going to drizzle with our cream cheese icing. I just put it into a piping bag, I cut the end, and we're just gonna do some zigzags all over these cookies. You can put as little or as much as you'd like. And ta -da! Here are all the Easter springtime treats that we made today. We made bite-sized bunny bum cake balls with a delicious strawberry cake recipe, a full spring garden cake with a delicious chocolate cake recipe, and the best carrot cake cookies. I really hope you guys enjoyed all these recipes. It's giving you some ideas for spring or for Easter. And I'll be posting a bunch of pictures all over my social medias. And if you guys make any of these treats, take a picture and send it to me. Use hashtag row recipe so that I can find it and heart it and like it and favorite it because I love seeing your baking creations. If you like watching these baking videos, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, click subscribe, it's free, and ring the bell to receive notifications every time I post a new video. Video. Also, if you have any other ideas for any other videos, let me know in the comments down below. And if you click up here or here, there'll be some other videos you can check out and watch. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video. Bye, you guys. Happy Easter and happy spring.